How are you? Good. You know what? There's just a little bit of it left, but not too much. <laughs> so yes, praise the Lord. Finally, yes. one of the month-long head cold or something like that. I don't know. I got a rotten egg for breakfast. That was a very bad start. <laughs> I was like, I really wanted to eat this egg, but I, I really wanted to eat that egg, and I, when I took a bite, I was like, Bleh. yes, rotten egg. And, and I was like, Bleh. yuck. Okay. She didn't believe me until she tried it. Yeah. <laughs> and I tried first, and it was a god. Like, thank you, God. We got a nice card and a letter from uh, Missy, Elizabeth Jones. Uh, dear pastor and church family, thanks for allowing me to share my love and call to serve the Lord with the Liberian people. It was a joy to be with you. Thanks. Thank you for wanting to know about my people and their needs. When they asked about your church, I told them how you help each other, and they thought it was a wonderful, they thought it was wonderful, <laughs> apparently. Thank you, too, for the great church dinner. Not only was the food wonderful, but fellowship was even greater. Hope to be able to visit with you again at some point. Thank you again for your loving kindness and for your warm welcome and fellowship. In Christ, Missy Elizabeth Jones, and I'll put this on the bulletin board out back. Um, let's see, what else? What else is going on? Lots going on. Uh, a lot of people in and out of hospitals. Uh, we've got, we want to keep our Sunday school crew, our kids in deep prayer this week. And uh, I'll say no more from the pulpit regarding that, but just really, really keep them, all, each of the kids in mind. Uh, You know, I don't know why my flesh makes prayer seem so useless sometimes, but it does. And beside the fact that my brain and my heart know that prayer is the first best thing we can always do, the flesh wants to grab shovels and do something. And it's dumb. Um, we're human, and as I said um uh, Last week, talking about that massage, it was interesting how, uh, in getting that massage, my flesh itself was protesting, getting rest and getting healing done to it. It didn't like it. And so, we are going to be discussing the, the famous Ephesians armor passage. And uh, just dipped into it a little bit last week, but. Uh, what do you need armor for? And that seems like a real dumb question. Bill, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to hang on. And I know Bill and his love of all things armored. A couple of our favorite superheroes happen to be people that wear armor. <laughs> and as we primarily met through, through the love of comic books and, and fictional characters who wear armor, but Bill is a, a, a real, uh, he, he has studied this stuff, and so he knows no, all kinds of case. He's, he's <laughs> as much as, as much as Corey and I know about Titanic, Bill knows about armor. So, the, I mean, and that's kudos, man, because he's got, he's got information. Anything you guys want to know about armor, you have to ask Mr. Hudson. Bill Hudson about. What do we need armor for? Well, fiery darts of the devil. You wear coats, your armor, against the cold. You have an umbrella, it's an armor against the rain. What is the armor that you wear for hurt? What is the armor that you wear for pain? Well, it could be argued that armor is good for not being hurt too bad. But you know what? When you get hit in armor, it hurts. 
Sometimes it hurts a little even, it stings a little even worse than if you weren't wearing armor at all. But the point is, that it won't do quite as much damage if you're wearing armor. That's the whole point. Um, if somebody was going to hack your arm off with a sword, it might not hurt very much at all. You wear armor and somebody smacks you on the arm with a sword, that's really going to hurt. But you still got your arm. <laughs> All right? So the idea that armor itself isn't going to, is going to alleviate pain is ridiculous. In, in, in point of fact, armor generally, regarding the armor that Paul's speaking about or alluding to here is what a lot of the Roman centurions and soldiers and a lot of, you know, the Israeli soldiers wore. A lot of that armor, it hurts when you get hit in it. It really does, but not as much damage will have occurred because you're wearing the armor. That's something that's important to try and keep in mind as we go through this. Armor doesn't solve everything. I think of a young man who was going to go against an enemy of a nation and the rest of the nation was too chicken to fight with the enemy. And the young man was about to, and God needed it, David to be this, I don't know, I love David. As much as I love Peter, I love the real bad boys of the Bible. <laughs> the triple Bs, the bad boys of the Bible. And some of the bad boys include women. <laughs> I love Rahab, I love all, you know, some of the women were just, Man, you talk about kick butt and take names. Yeah. <laughs> Deborah, good Lord. <laughs> Others, you know, come on, come on in the tent and I'll stab you through the head. She's the tent peg. Tent yes. Here, I'll we'll set up a tent in the middle of your head. <laughs> But, oh, we'll discuss those later. Um, David got set up and they, they put a lot of armor on him and he basically said, this stuff is weighing me down. I don't like it. Take it off. Get it off me. I'm going to fight him just as I am. He didn't wear any armor at all, except he had the type of armor, well, he had God's hands like this around him. He was wearing basically a, a skirt, a kilt, if you will, something along the lines of half a t-shirt maybe, and his sling. And that, you know, maybe some footwear, probably not. I mean, a lot of those guys with that job, a lot of those kids, their, their feet are like iron anyway. Their feet are almost like armor themselves. And he went against this giant. And he took him down <laughs> without armor. Sometimes, sometimes we feel like we don't have any armor at all, no protection at all. Some news hits you like a ton of bricks and you just don't expect it and you go, oh, what? And you are just lambasted with this sudden new reality and how do you deal with it? Stunned. You're stunned. You don't have the words. You never thought that person would do something like that. We think about when people suddenly go crazy, and there's a lot of them. We hear about it a lot more because there's a lot more cameras around, a lot more phones recording the information. We're getting hit all the time, and it doesn't have to be necessarily Satan's fiery darts. Mankind come up with its own, a lot of its own stupidity and terror without Satan's help at all. It's because the flesh is sinful. The flesh doesn't like peace. The flesh doesn't like rest. The flesh enjoys war and conflict. That's the situation. And Jesus said, and if you have been here in the Sunday evenings, we're discussing the part in Matthew where Jesus says, I mean, you're about to get eaten. 
At the very least, you're going to get chewed on. I send you like lambs amongst wolves. And guess what? You're going to get chewed on. Parts of you ain't coming back. <laughs> you're going to lose chunks. That's the deal. There's no way to avoid that. I really, I've had a situation the last couple of weeks where people go, well, I'm no good with conflict. As if that means that because they said that, now you, you need to shut up and not say a thing, regardless of what they say. And that, that's not true either. I'm not good with conflict. Oh, I'm sorry, but I won't say anything. I won't fight you at all. Nonsense. Nonsense. I'll fight you. I don't care if you're not good with conflict. Life is conflict. How do you get good with it if you don't confront it? How many of you ladies had babies that just went, whoop, hi? <laughs> How many of you ladies had children where there was no labor at all? It was just, whoop. No? Wow, that amazes me. I'm stunned. <laughs> shocked, I tell you, shocked. No, giving birth itself is a trial, is a I honor you women so because of motherhood. I, I've seen Kathy go through it three times. The last was easier. Colin kind of was like, hi, let's get this going. But the other two didn't want nothing to do with it. Life, uh -uh. I like this here, whatever this is. Ian especially. No. <laughs> no. I, I don't know men that would... Here, here's, this, here's the amount of pain you're about to go through. What do you think? No, no thank you, not for me. And women go through it all the time giving birth. It is astonishing. You don't have any armor for that. Okay, you might have some kind of armor for getting into that condition, but that's another issue. <laughs> Ephesians, book of Ephesians. Chapter 6, starting in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's weird. It doesn't say in the power of Corey's might or in the power of Amy's might or David's might. It says in the power of his might. Why is it in? Why can't it be there? Put on. The whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And the wiles of your friends. And the wiles of your family. And the wiles of your neighborhood. It'd be nice if everybody acted like Mr. Rogers. That's rare. That's very rare. We wrestle, verse 12, not against flesh and blood, although that's part of it, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And oh my Lord, are we seeing that over and over and over and over again. Hmm, a special prosecutor is, they're looking into signing legislation so that the special prosecutor can't be fired. Where have I seen that before? That's brand new, isn't it? No. <laughs> no. Oh my God, no. <laughs> in my lifetime, I've seen that at least once before, back in the 70s. It's like that all over again, and it fries my brain. I'm like, how could we be repeating this? How are we possibly that stupid? But we are. One of the political parties apparently didn't do what it was supposed to do and favored one of the that's favored one of the candidates. That's a shock to me. Not really. <laughs> oh, this is terrible news. No, it's it's here. It's in here. It's talking about that garbage in here. In this book, which is part of your armor. In fact, it's where your armor comes from. The author of this book is where your, where your armor comes from, but this is the directions on how to put it on. <laughs> okay? 
We're fighting, wrestling against principalities, against powers, against this, the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Does it talk about fight in that verse? Stand. It does say the sword of the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. You're reading that. <laughs> You're David. What's it end like? I'll go now. <laughs> Stand, therefore, verse 14, having your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith with which you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay. The sword of the spirit which is God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that in this I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, And again, this gets personal with Paul. Paul saying, remember me. Even though you don't see me every Sunday in church, like you're going to anyway. Even if I don't come visit, even if, you know, I'm in the hospital or you're in the hospital, even if I'm sick and I don't like visitors and I've asked you not to come over and visit me. Remember me in prayer. That's the thing that works. We each have our personality peccadilloes, you know. Some of us, well, some of us like lemon meringue, and lemon custard, and some of us go, eh, I want pumpkin, eh, have another pumpkin, everything. Mm. Kathy made chicken over me last week. How do you like it? It's chicken. Did I say, oh, what a great meal, love. That was great. Thank you so much. No. You know what I did? And how insulting, I'm thinking about it. I owe you an apology. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being slain by the spirit right here. See? She, she barbecued us some chicken, and it was, you know, it was done really nice, and it was chicken. So there is my fiery dart. She did a really wonderful, nice thing to me. What did I do? I love her. What did I do? It's a chicken. How rude. How rude. There's a fiery dart right there. On a real bad day, that could have been an explosion. Huh? What do you mean it's just chicken? Well, it's chicken. Not, yeah, you did a great job. That's not what you said. Well, it is kind of what it is. No, you said it's just chicken. You don't care about anything that I do for you. It could have blown up really, really good. And small things have blown up like that before. They do. What? <laughs> now I'm kind of used to it. That's a common, that's a common well, kind of, What I should do is ask for wisdom. How's the chicken? Absolutely incredible. It doesn't need to be that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't right out. I'm not joking on that. That's okay. <laughs> she knew it before she married me. I said, eh, yes. you don't like chicken? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm marrying my father, she said. Because that's, <laughs> kind of that's the kind of answer he would give. Do you like chicken? Not necessarily. Not particularly. <laughs> but from that little thing, that could have been an explosion, that could have been a war. You know, but I was just in the, but Kathy, thank the Lord, has a certain type of armor. Well, that's just David. Just like I said, well, that's just chicken. She went, that's just you. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
You don't have to necessarily like what you're eating, right? And I don't have to like this, but oh boy, here we go. I know it's probably going to be good for me at some point anyway, but I got to go through this. It's just chicken. Why can't it be lobster tail? Why can't I be married to somebody who liked everything I paid for? How come I, you know, blah, blah, blah. I love this joke. The woman says to the man, Do I look fat in this? And the man says, Do I look like an idiot? <laughs> and she says, Yes. <clears throat> Armor. Armor. We're looking at armor. Now, when, when Paul is writing this, people were wearing armor pretty much all over the place. You could see somebody in armor. You didn't need to go on TV to see it. You walk around the city, you walk around this area. You've seen guys wearing armor, right? We have a different kind of armor. We see our servicemen and women wearing certain types of armor, but we don't see it all the time. But we have, we have seen tanks. We do see the shields of the cops sometimes, especially during the protests and things of that nature. Um, they can look pretty scary. But what is armor's primary function? Keep you alive. Protection. Protection. Offensive. It can be used offensively, but that's not its main function unless you're Wonder Woman or Captain America and you use your shield as an offensive weapon to protect you. But that's defense. The sword is your defense. No. no. It's the other way around. Other way around. Yep. Yep. Dealing with the situation, um, as best you can, and if you look at the behind the armor. Armor is to protect you. Often, it's defensive. Defending yourself. You're defending yourself. You're defending the word of the Lord. You're defending God's name. Did David, without armor, knocking that giant out, down, and dead, was he defending God? Did God need this little man to defend him? No. No. But God wanted David to make a point. Israel, you're supposed to be making sure these giants are out of here. That they get no voice in your life. You're not supposed to be scared to death of them. That you do nothing. And let them make you slaves and kill your children. And rape your wives. You don't do that, Israel. You have me, God says. And through David, he's letting Israel know, oh yeah, David couldn't build something he so wanted to build because God made him a violent man. And it hurt. It hurts to stand for God. That's why you need the armor for your defense. Because people, were, people will kill you for it. And they'll kill you slowly. And they'll knock you around spiritually. People you thought were your friends. You really believe that garbage? No. Oh, you believe that fairy tale Bible garbage? Yes, I do. I don't want anything more to do with you. But I like you. And I'm struggling hard to love you, even though I don't really like you right now. Because what you've done and what you've said hurts. Sticks and stones may break my bones. Nonsense. Words always kill you. Sticks and stones you get over. Names hurt. And I've been guilty of it just as much as anybody else. So have you. You've had a rough day. You're down. You haven't had peanut butter. You haven't had lunch. You haven't had that second cup of coffee. And you're like, Dah! you're like a wounded animal, and somebody's trying to feed you. Dah! You bite their hand. 
<laughs> it's kind of funny, but it's really sad too. She hasn't seen me eating. This is where you need the armor the most. This is where you need the armor the most. It is incredibly difficult, but it's for your protection because when you go around like the ravenous wolf, and you're supposed to be harmless as a dove and wise as a serpent, you forgot your armor. How else are you going to withstand all the hurt? Some of which you're responsible for. How can you stand? How can the light of Christ shine through you? General George Patton, I don't, it doesn't matter if, if you're familiar with the, the man, you don't have to like the man, he was quite a commander. He liked armor shining. He liked soldiers to be clean and bright and shining, even in the worst situations. And people thought he was absolutely crazy, and he was with regard to that. How are, can you be in the front lines and look shiny and neat like a sh soldier? He wanted you to try. You'd get yelled at if you had mud left over from yesterday's combat on your pants. Well, that's insane. You're still in the same mud. No, you knocked the mud off from yesterday off. Because it says something about you. The mud from yesterday is already taken care of. I need to be protected from the mud of today. It weighs you down. It weighs you down. It eats away at the fabric of the trousers you're wearing. <laughs> Any number of things. That was George Patton's point. Sufficient unto the day is two things. Well, for one thing, today is all you have. And you may not have the rest of it. That's harsh. You need armor for that reality. You need armor for that reality. Talking about harvest dinner, talking about not being able to have a certain type of food that you've enjoyed in the past, unless you learn to make it yourself. I'm talking about Margaret's Jello, cranberry Jello. I'll try to make it like she did, and I might get close, but it ain't going to be the same. You know why? Because it was hers. <laughs> and that hurts. And I need armor for that. Do you believe that? I need armor because of Joe. Huh? How ridiculous is that? My father was always scared of one type of death. One, one type of death he always feared. Choking to death on orange Joe. I don't know why it was orange, but that's what he said. I think it's because he didn't like the flavor. I'm going to be at some place, I'm going to eat some orange jello, it's going to log in my throat, and I'm going to choke to death. That was one thing he always feared. <laughs> so every I'm time he'd say, huh? I said, you come by it honestly, don't you? I come by weird stuff very <laughs> honestly, yes. Yes. But how many, it's why did he eat orange jello? I don't know. And he's, he's dead, so you can't ask him just yet. You know, when you see him, you can ask him later, but you'll probably understand why. That was just that was just something that was weird with him. He'd get kind of edgy around orange jello. <laughs> Isn't that insane? I needed armor to deal with my father when he was going through that. <clears throat> what does armor look like? Well, what should you look like when you have the armor on? Put on the whole armor of God. What does that look like? Well, hopefully it looks like light. It looks like light sometimes so bright that nobody would dare raise a, an instrument of war against you. That would be incredibly hard. Has anybody ever stood in front or in the middle of four different people who were fighting and made them stop? Have you ever done that? 
Yeah. Raise your hands if you've done that. All right. It wasn't very successful. No. No, but did you get them to stop? For a moment. Yeah. For the moment. For the moment. Which is enough. Yeah. Which is enough. Yeah. Did they have weapons? I mean, other than their hands? Yeah. Yeah. That's scary. That's, that's the little scar right there. Uh, tongue is a weapon. Yeah. Tongue. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a weapon. Yeah. It's, it can get very scary. When you're in the middle of those four people, what are you supposed to be doing with them? In your head, in your heart. Well, I pray for me first. I'm selfish. God get me through this. And stop them by doing what? This is the amazing part. Did you have to fight? Isn't that amazing? Could you bring peace to a group of people standing in the middle of their warring and bring peace to them? That's the honor of God. Were you scared? Yeah. Did you remember to ask for the army? I need the helmet now. I need the shield. I need the breastplate now. 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 Please. Yeah. That's an amazing thing. Uh, a violent man gave me a very big compliment one time. And we talked about it. He says, oh, you didn't raise a hand, you didn't raise a finger, and you stopped that. I've never seen anything like that. You're incredibly courageous, or you are really, really stupid. Oh. And, and I laughed, I said, I both. But I can't let that go on. Somebody had to stop it. Because the Goliath in that story was the hate those poor people were showing each other. And the hitting they were doing. And the bloodletting that they were doing. And that had to stop. And sometimes you have to just stand there and you can't raise a finger. Because that's... The peace is what's supposed to win. The peace is the sword. The sword of the spirit is what? Enlightenment. Truth. What's really real. And that's why we get so scared because sometimes when the Lord wants us to wield it, one, <laughs> our flesh says, you're not worthy of this. All right? And the flesh is right, except... Jesus Christ made us worthy. Hey? Eh? He did that. So we can wield it. We can use it. Jesus Christ gave us the shield. And we can use it for our protection. We're worthy to hold it. It's brilliant. It's amazing. And Jesus enabled us and trained us to do this. The Word is the training manual. You hear about basic training and all kinds of jokes about basic training. We're in basic training till we draw our last breath. But the armor is available to us all the time. Take unto you, verse 13, once again, the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand in, all, in the evil day, which is all day today. And if you got it tomorrow, it's going to be tomorrow too. Have a nice day. Well, I hope you have a victorious day. Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil, be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, not your righteousness, Jesus' righteousness, His. 
because he's already beaten a bunch of people. He's already beaten the enemy. Only he is righteous. Any kind of righteousness I have, David Cook has, just like my brother Paul, is like a bunch of filthy rags when compared to even a small portion of his. I need him. You need him. He's your armor. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Stand in that peace. It's real. Our faith gets shaken a lot, but ultimately we make a decision. Do you stand in it or not? Despite everything yelling at you that it's nonsense, despite voices telling you that you're an idiot for thinking and believing this stuff, stand one place or another. Standing in the midst of four warring people, being told that I was courageous, I said, I, I'm not courageous at all. That is my Lord. I love the weird looks you get, like you have nine heads, or they, they all look at you like dogs that hear that far away sound, and like, huh? <laughs> what? That's doing something unusual. The courage that comes from Jesus. Huh? Yeah. Because that's an example right in front of them, and they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> they really don't. Because that's not like the earth. Earth says, you're supposed to fight back. Jesus says, I don't need to. I won already. <coughs> er? You can hear the earth tilt on its axis. <laughs> Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. This, this, dive into. You don't need swimming trunks. Go in naked. It's the best way. Skinny dip in the word and get drenched and come out in it and go, oh, that felt great. And then dry off and go out into the world having been refreshed in it, replenished in it, and having the armor it provides, the armor God provides. His word, his promise, his sacrifice, his war that he fought for you and won. And that's a fact, Jack. That just is. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance might be given unto me. Pray for each other that you know what to say, that you know how not to goop up. Pray for each other that the next time somebody asks you, how's the food, you won't say, well, it's just chicken. Pray that you say something that uplifts them after they've done something nice for you. Or even uplifts them, and this is especially important, after they've said something incredibly nasty to you. They have their lies. You have Christ. And you have Christ because you have your lies too. Be careful. Our Heavenly Father, as we go out into this world, help us remember exactly the armor that we need, which is all of it. Help us utilize it. Help us understand what it is protecting. Most of all, Father, help us understand that it is your sword of your spirit. It is not intended for us to wield it like a sword of judgment. Unless, specifically, you absolutely tell us that. It's supposed to be an armor that represents light and peace and you, not us. Help us.
just remember that. There's all kinds of different armors and all kinds of different battalions in the world. All kinds of different flags we can wear this armor under. But let us make sure that it is your flag that we represent. Your spirit, your son, your love, your light. And help us walk out in the darkness in that. And help us shine, Father, for you for the gospel, the good news of your son and what he's done for us. I ask these things, Father, I ask you to keep us all mindful of that in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Um, Brother David and 